Well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Hey, uh, I've been doing some uh, work on my uh, off-grid solar systems here at the cabin. I thought I'd kind of walk you through what I've been doing and maybe just give you an overview of uh, how I live off-grid. I've been off-grid now for over 20 years. And uh, so my systems has changed a lot in that time. Uh, when I first started out going off-grid, there was not very many solar panels available, and they were very expensive. I started out with a Harbor Freight 45-watt system uh, and an old truck battery, and uh, that powered my water pump and ran a radio for a few hours and a fan for a few hours. That's And that system there cost me over $300. So times have changed a lot, and people are going off-grid, and it's a lot easier to go off-grid now. Uh, panels have come way down in price, Batteries have come way down in price. We didn't even have lithium iron, what they call life pull four batteries back then. Uh, and so, you know, we've, uh, us old off gridders have went through a lot of changes over the years. So I'll just walk you through just basically some of the systems that I use here in my off grid cabin. Okay, so this is my off-grid cabin. It's a 14 by 14, uh, hand-built, uh, all built completely by myself. And back then, uh, about 20 years ago, I was able to build that for about $2,000 with a lot of uh, salvaged windows and doors and recycled wood. Uh, and I have lived here, and this is a property that used to belong to my granddad. And he was an original homesteader in this area. He split off pieces of property to his kids, and then my dad split it off to some of us. And I've got just a little less than an acre of uh, property here. And then I'm also uh, part owner of the uh, 15 acres behind that my brother uses. Uh, he has horses and a few things back there on that property. But this is pretty much all I use for my property here. And I started out off grid in just a little camp trailer, which you can see kind of back there in the corner. I started off in that little camp trailer back there, uh, just parked it on my property. And this land did not look anything like this. This was completely full of uh, Russian olives and sagebrush and weeds and old crap that had been left behind by the uh, other people that used the property. And so it took a lot of work to get the place looking like this, okay, over the years. But, uh, I live off-grid, and as you can see, there is a power pole on my property. And at one time, there was a trailer on here uh, that had power and was connected to the grid. However, when I moved back here, because I wasn't going to jump through their hoops and build a traditional home, they wouldn't hook up my grid power. So I said, screw you, I'll live off-grid and live with solar power. Now, you can see at the top of my uh, pole, I actually use that uh, for a wind turbine. That's a 400 watt wind turbine and I have videos showing how I set that up. However, we don't get enough wind in this area to really make having a wind turbine worth it. Get a little bit in the winter time, maybe we'll get a few storms in the summertime and uh, we'll add to my power, uh, but as uh, as a system for running off-grid, wind turbines should be your secondary choice, not your primary choice. Uh, solar would be your primary choice. Now, I do a lot of off-grid uh, videos and uh, have my channel that I do off-grid adventures. There's my little dog, Tuffer, right there. She's my adventure dog. I also got Taz around here. Uh, and so I kind of live a, a very simple life. Uh, and, uh, you know, I try to keep all my bills because I have no house payments and no utility bills. I can keep my expenses really low, and that gives me uh, time and money to go and do my adventuring, which is what I really enjoy doing. Now, this is my uh, system. Now, originally, I had about 580 watts. Some of you may remember who've watched my movies. I had about 580 watts of solar panels up on my roof. There were a whole bunch of mis mismatched panels and batteries, and I had a real struggle trying to keep things running. Uh, they didn't work really well, and so uh, about after I used those for about five years, I decided to heck with that. The panels came way down in price, so I purchased these. These are Renogi monocrystalline 100 watt panels and I, you can see I made my own mount it's a, attached to uh, my horse hitch post here that's my horse hitch post and then attached uh, with just some cinder blocks and uh, some high tensile wire this is 400 watts and uh, it is connected inside to, I've got some sealed AGM batteries, about 400 watts of AGM batteries. And that is all I had for many years here. That's all I used. And uh, it runs everything in the cabin. It runs the uh, water pump, 12-volt water pump, uh, my Alpaco fridge freezer, uh, lights, uh, recharges, or runs my laptop, recharges all kinds of gadgets, runs my swamp cooler. Everything that I need to function will run off this 400-watt system here. Then uh, a couple years ago, I decided that I wanted to add a few things to my place, but I didn't want to add any more panels. I don't, I, and because of the situation, you can see I've got some big trees here on both sides. 
And so uh, these panels, even though they, they work really well, there's times when I get some shade and I'm not getting the full uh, expanse of the, the sun power that I would like to get from a system. But I don't want to remove and, and move these panels any farther out. So what I decided to do is expand my system with some portable panels and also just some temporary panels instead of building on and, and adding a larger battery bank because my AGM batteries are kind of old. I'm going to be replacing them with the new LifePo 4 batteries, uh, which have come way down in price and also are a lot more uh, storage capacity for batteries. So what I decided to do is I build a couple of portable power systems, which I show you here. And these, I decided to do these this way because these can be moved wherever I want them in the sunlight so as the uh, throughout the year we get uh, sunlight from different directions sometimes it's lower in the sky in winter higher up in summer I like to be able to adjust the panels that way I can just walk out here real quickly and adjust these uh, portable power stations uh, and these are connected this is a uh, 200 watt this is two 100 watt uh, monocrystalline solar panels they are on a uh, 4x4 trailer and I can tip this down or I can move it around in the sunlight so I always get the best sunlight okay and that is connected to a 200 amp hour LifePo 4 amper time battery and it I use that as a backup for my 400 watt system if that gets drained down low then I can run my swamp cooler or my fridge off of this just as 200 watt system using that uh, 200 amp hour life pull uh, for battery now this one I just built uh, this is actually an e-bike recharging station and portable camper uh, to go on my behind my e-bike is on a trailer uh, doggy hut trailer that is a hundred uh, watt uh, flexible monocrystalline solar panel and it, it it only weighs about five pounds compared now that's a hundred watt panel there you can see it is bigger and that weighs over 15 pounds one of those this panel here is a flexible solar panel only weighs under five pounds okay now inside that trailer which i won't show you i've also got a life po 4 battery that's a hundred amp hour uh life po 4 made by bacteria and i've got this connected so that i can recharge my e-bike and i can take this with me along for camping but in winter time what I will do since I won't be riding the e-bike that much I can still use this to charge up uh, the battery and then take the battery inside and use that for a recharging station for any gadgets or anything like that it's an emergency power backup system for my own system if I happen to have three or four days of really bad sunlight I still have got this battery that I can use now you can also see back there uh, leaning against my Vardo those are two of my older panels that I used to have up on my roof but they still had uh, a lot of life left in them and those are a uh, hundred and uh, let's see 120 watt and a, a hundred and yeah I think they're both 120 watt uh, solar panels you can't even get those the company that made them are out of business now uh, but I decided to put them to use so I also put those up there leaning up against my uh, Vardo camper and I use those to also recharge a uh, 100 amp hour AGM battery inside that I use for powering my Wi-Fi and recharging gadgets. Now, do I really need all this? No, I actually don't even need the uh, additional solar panels and portable systems uh, with my 400 watt system out there. But in wintertime, a lot of times, because we may get three or four days of low sunlight... Uh, my 400 watt system batteries may get drained down and then I can run low on power. So having these backup systems are really excellent for an off-gridder like me because then I can just switch over, switch my appliances over to one of the other batteries and I can still operate if I get three, four days or maybe even a week of really low sunlight in the winter. I've still got enough power to operate everything in my cabin. Plus I added an e-bike, which I'll show you, which is up on my porch here. I've done some videos of it. I added an e-bike and electric mower. Now, there's the electric mower made by Sunjo. And I, I use that instead of a gas mower because I'm trying to reduce as much gas as possible here. That recharges from these portable power systems. And then I also have an e-bike, which I've been using a lot instead of driving my old truck uh, because gas prices are so high. That's my e-bike right there. That's the Aerial X 52 volt. And uh, I can get 30 miles range on that at 30 miles per hour. And I ride that back and forth to uh, do supply runs. And I recharge that from my portable power systems. 
uh, instead of charging them from the 400 watt system so i'm not adding additional uh, load to my 400 watt system and because i ride the e-bike a lot it has to be charged pretty much every day uh, i didn't want to add that extra load especially when i'm running a swamp cooler because it has been hot as hell here it has been uh, we've reached days where it's been 104 degrees and so i have to run the swamp cooler a lot and if i'm running a swamp cooler all day and charging the e-bike that's a lot of load to put on that 400 watt system so these additional power uh charger stations uh make up the difference in summertime when i need that additional power but i don't really need it all the time and they are a backup system for my place uh in winter if i do have uh, low sundays okay so that is the amount of my uh off-grid systems uh this works really well for my place here and uh, I also wanted to be able to show people that there are different ways that you can set up your solar panels to make them portable if you need to. This would be a good setup. You can actually tow it along with your truck and uh, use it when you're building. If you're building an off-grid cabin or something like that, you can use it for your power station instead of a generator uh, to operate your tools and lights and things like that, and then use it to run your cabin after you're you're done building it. Okay. The e-bike system there, excellent portable por uh, power station uh, that can be used for anything you don't have to use it behind an e-bike you can use a small trailer like that 100 watt panel pull it wherever you want to put it behind your atv take it out in the field when you're working to run your tools or whatever like that all right folks i hope you enjoyed this video it kind of gives you an overview of uh, how i ended up uh, where i am and off grid with the systems that i use have a great day folks trip on me cause you don't walk my walk I am my own man there ain't no one else like me I am my own man and I live as I please